Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. I would like to present to you um, one problem which is actually subdivided into sub-problems, if you wish. Um, uh, I, I put it uh, uh, in the category of advanced um, problems in theory of probabilities. Well, it's not really a difficult problem, but it's an important one, and uh, I consider if we will go through all the details for this program, for this problem, it would be very beneficial for us. Okay, this is part of um, advanced math course uh, presented on Unizor.com, um, which is actually intended for uh, teenagers who are willing to spend time and efforts to get deeper understanding of mathematical concepts, which basically aimed at just development of their minds. That's the most important goal of mine. All right, so let's go to this particular problem. Uh, here is the general description. Um, We're playing a game, a game of roulette. Um, according to, um, I think it's called American rules or Las Vegas rules, whatever it is. Um, there are uh, numbers from 1 to 36, and then there is 0 and double zero on a spinning wheel. And uh, numbers can be red or black. When it falls, when, when, the, uh, when, the, when the dice uh, falls on 0, double zero, the, um, it, you're losing. Uh, now, if it's one of these, uh, it depends on your bet. Now, you can bet on a particular number or you can bet on a color. For instance, there are two colors, uh, uh, red and black. Um, and depending on what exactly you're betting, your payoff is different, obviously. We will consider only one way of betting. Let's say you're betting on the color red. Uh, so half of these 18 numbers are red and the other half is uh, white, uh, no, black, sorry. So uh, if it's one of these, it's, uh, it means it's 18 red numbers. Um, altogether, we have 30, 38 numbers, right? 38 uh, cells on the wheel. So basically, if you betting on the red, your probability of winning is 1838s, right? And probability of losing correspondingly is uh, 20 38s. So this is win and this is lose. That's probability on a single spin. Now let's talk about strategy. Um, the person comes and thinks about this way. I will bet one unit of currency. Let's say, let's call it Bitcoin. So I'm betting one Bitcoin on the first spin of the wheel. If I lose with this probability, I will double the amount. I will put two coins two bitcoins next time. If I will lose, I will double the game. I will put four coins, etc. But if I win, on the first win I get, I will finish the game. So what happens is the following. Let's just discuss it in, in more details. Let's say you're spinning wheel just once. There are two possibilities. Either you win, in which case um, you, you bet one bitcoin, and the payoff, if you are betting on the color, is double your bet. So um, it will be uh, minus one you bet, and then you get two if you win, so you're actually winning one. Right? Now, or you can lose, in which case you are basically um, losing your one bet, and then you start the next game, and you're putting double the amount, which is two. Now you can always either win or lose. Now, you are betting two now, but now if you win, you get double, which means you end your game again with one uh, Bitcoin in plus. And if you're losing, well, you're losing your um, minus uh, two uh, bitcoins and you are playing the third time doubling again it can be win or lose 
and now you're betting four. Now if you're betting four, you are getting back eight if you win. So you're losing this, 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 and then you're winning this. Minus one, minus two, minus four, again one. So it looks like on every time, if you win, um, you are gaining one Bitcoin. And that's the end of the game. Or if you're losing, you continue the game by doubling the amount. So I would like to basically um, research this particular strategy, how good it is or how bad it is. All right. So we know the game and we know the strategy. So let's go to the problems. Okay. Let's consider that you would like to be able to stay in the game for n spins. That's your goal. Let's say spin takes know, a minute and you would like to be able to uh, be in the casino for n minutes for sure. Well, but you're doubling the amount all the time, right? Which means you have to have enough money to double the amount for n times in a row. Now, if you would like to be able to stay in the game for n spins, you have to be prepared to bet n times. So the first time you bet one and you lose, the second time you bet two and you lose, etc., etc. And on the nth spin, this is two to the power of zero to the power of one, so that should be n minus one. So that's your bets, and you're losing all the time because you're continuing the game. You have to be able to stay in the game for n, for n times, for n spins, which means you have to have this sum. That's the amount of capital which you need. So that's my first problem. What is the amount of capital which you need to be able to assure yourself to stay in the game for n spins, for n, 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 n times of spinning? Well, obviously, this is equal to what? 2 to the nth degree minus 1. Now, this is a geometric progression, and uh, obviously, I don't remember the formulas, but I do remember that to uh, summarize the geometric progression, you have to multiply the sum by the factor. Factor is 2. And subtract. If you subtract from this, this, you will get S is equal two to the power of N minus one. Right? Okay. Now I will wipe this out and that's my answer to the first problem. You need two to the power of N minus one capital bitcoins if you wish if you're betting if your initial bet is one bitcoin you need two to the power of n minus one bitcoins if your initial bet is ten dollars well you need two to the power of n minus one times ten dollars all right so that's my first problem next problem um, next problem is the, uh, the following uh, I, I would like to uh, list all the elementary events, um, mutually exclusive events, which uh, can happen during these n games for which you have enough capital. So you have, let's assume you have the capital 2 to the power of n minus 1, which means you can play up to, ten, uh, up to n um, games. And my question is, what are mutually exclusive results of these um, experiments. Well, first you spin once and you win and this is the end of the game, right? So the event number one is win the first spin. Event number two, you lose the first spin and win second spin. 
and th that's the end of the game because you have strategy to, uh, to uh, end the game as soon as you win, right? Event number three, you lose first and second game, but you win the third. Event number N, you lose first, second, etc. N minus first game, and then you win Nth. And finally, event number N plus one, you lose first, second, etc. N minus first and nth game, the very last game you end. And that's also the end of the whole game because you don't have any more money. You're running out of money, which means this is the end of the game. So these are completely independent, mutually exclusive events. Uh, you can call them elementary events, which comprise the whole game. The whole game can be divided into these outcomes. There are no more outcomes if you have 2 to the power of n minus 1 capital. And the first bet is 1. So that's my second problem. To list all the different outcomes. Next. Well, obviously the next one is to attach the probability to each one of them. Well, let's just think about it. What's the probability of winning the first spin? Well, the probability of winning once is 1838s, right? So this is 1838s. Now, this, you lose the first one, which the probability is 2038s, and then you win the second. You lose two times in a row. Now, by the way, the events are completely independent. That's why I'm multiplying the probability to signify the um, that both should be actually happening. Now, these are three different spins, independent. The probability of first and the second is 138, so it's square. And the probability of this one is 1838, winning on the third one. How about this one? You lose n minus time, time, time uh, uh, spins, right? So it's 2038 to the power of n minus 1 times 1838 the very last one. And finally, it's 2038 to the power of n minus 1. Uh, n, sorry, n. n times in a row you lose. That's the probability of each event, each outcome of this particular game. Now, just to be sure that this is correct, uh, I always recommend to add these together and check if you get one as a result of this, because the sum of all the probabilities must be equal to one. Let's just check it out. Okay. So we have to summarize these guys. Well, these all have 1838 as a factor, so it would be 1838 times 1 plus 2038 plus 2038 square, etc. plus 2038 to the power of n, n minus 1. Right? And plus this one. Equals. Okay. What is this? Well, again, this is a geometric progression. Uh, and uh, again, if you remember, uh, to summarize it, you have to multiply it by the factor uh, and, uh, and subtract. So um, let's just count it separately. If you have s equals 1 plus 2 plus etc. plus q to the power of n minus 1, then qs is equal to, oh, sorry, not 2, this is a q. Then q square, etc. So the q times s is q times q square plus etc. plus 
qn minus 1 plus q to the power of n, right? I'm multiplying each member by n, subtract. Now uh, these guys are all cancelling out and I have s1 minus q equals 1 minus q to the power of n, right? So s is equal to 1 minus q to the power of n divided by 1 minus q. So let's do it here. Now q is 20, 38, right? So I have to replace this with this s, which is 1 minus 20, 38 to the power of n divided by 1 minus 20, 38. All right? And this one. One minus twenty over thirty-eight is eighteen thirty-eight, and this is eighteen thirty-eight. So these two are canceling out. Now you have one minus twenty thirty-eight to the power of n, and plus twenty thirty-eight to the power of one, okay, which means it's equal to one. So my check is fine. Sum is equal to. Wow, that's good. So this is my next problem. So I have proven that, well, not proven. I, I, I didn't prove that all these numbers are correct, but I just checked some elementary uh, procedure that uh, it satisfies certain obvious rule. Now, my next problem is to find the expectation of the winning or losing whatever it is. I mean, if it's negative, it would be losing. If it's positive, it will be winning, right? So the expectation of the results of, this, of these games. Now, let's think about what is the expectation. If you have an outcome, um, outcome is basically the value of the random variable, right? It, now, what is our value of the random variable, which is a winning? In this case, we win one. In this case, we win again 1. You remember we were basically uh, calculating this. Uh, in the very beginning of this lecture, I was just talking about what we are winning if we are ending the game on the win. Summarize all the previous losses and the, and, and the last winning, and, and I always have 1 as a result, right? So I'm basically referring to this beginning of the lecture, and in all these cases, I have 1 as a result. That's my winning, except the last one. In the last case, I'm losing completely all my capital. And remember what capital was? My capital was 2 to the power of n minus 1. So in this case, I'm losing this. All these cases, I'm winning 1. All right, so let's just calculate the uh, expectation by, uh, you know, the natural way, straightforward. If you have a um, random variable which takes value x1 with a probability of p1, x2, x2 with probability of p2, etc., xn with probability pn, pn, then this is the definition of expectation, right? This is expected value. Now, our random variable takes value of 1 with probability this, takes value of 1 with probability of this, takes value of 1 with probability of this, etc., etc., and takes the value minus 2 to the power of n minus 1 with this probability. So let's just summarize and see how, how it works. So it's 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 and 1, so I'm basically uh, multiplying the whole sum 1 plus 2038 plus 2038 square plus 2038 to the power of n minus 1 I have to multiply by 1 well I don't have to write it right it's multiplication by 1 and this one 2038 to the power of n, I have to multiply by this with a negative sign, which is minus 2 to the power of n plus 1. So that's my expectation. 
Okay, I don't need this anymore. Now you remember we were just calculating a second ago, we were calculating this. And this is 1838, here 1 minus 2038 to the power of n divided by 1 minus 20 over 38. Now this is cancelling out. Um, right, and that's what I have. Now this plus um, well actually it's plus one I can say plus one right plus one and um, minus um, 20 times 2 is 40, 38 to the power of n, something like this, right? Oh no, that's not 1, sorry. This is 1 multiplied by 20, 38. So it's 20, 38 to the power of n. That's what it is, right? 20, 38 times 1. And 20 38 times minus 2 to the power of n, so it's 20 times 2, which is 40 to the power of n. So now this is out. Now this is cancelling with this one. So I have 1 minus 40 38 to the power of n. So that's my expectation. And now let's go to my last problem, which is. Is it good or bad? Well, obviously this is bad. Why? Because 40, 38 is slightly more than 1, obviously, right? To the power of n, it's even more than that. So this is negative. Since expectation is negative, well, the more you play, the more you lose. What's important actually is that if you have a lot a lot of money and you're playing you're thinking that you if you have a lot of money your, your your chances to win are more well your chances to win are more but your chances to lose um, are, are also very important and if you lose you lose more right so the, the proper way is to compare the expectations so the more money you have so the more a number of games you you, you can in theory uh, play um, losing all, all the time, the less your expectation is, because you see this power of n, which means this is greater than 1, it's increasing and increasing and increasing. So this becomes more and more negative. Which means this game is, number one, not good for you, and number two, if you think that with more money you are bettering your chances, you are wrong. Your chances are on average i mean obviously things happen but on average if you play with a million dollars once twice thrice etc 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 on average you will lose more than if you put than if you play with a dollar right so that was my last problem um that number one that's not a good strategy and number two uh the more money you have the more you lose on average uh, and, well, you can conclude that uh, any kind of a gambling is not a good thing for you. <laughs> Casino is always wins. Uh, well, unless you, you know, unless you cheat or something like that. All right, anyway, that was my um, first problem among so-called advanced probability problems. It's not as advanced, but it's kind of involved and it, it, I think it pays to to go through all the details, to go through all the elementary events, their um, probabilities, the expectation, etc., etc. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.